Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Today I am going to speak to uh, Dr. Amir Ali from Western Australia. He actually comes from Kathanguri in Sri Lanka and he went to the UK for high studies and then also worked in Brunei and studied in Australia as well. And then he has been a, a Muslim leader and he was a president of uh, AFIC for some time. I actually met him in 1998. Brother Fazli, who was involved in AFIC as well, introduced me to Dr. Amir Ali and I had really uh, wanted to meet Dr. Amir Ali for a long time and then the same day I took him to my house and then we had a coffee there and then our introduction started. So let's go and meet him. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Amir Ali. Alaikum assalam Rahman. Nice to meeting you after a long time. It is indeed a, a, a very pleasant to meet you and talk to you. Yeah, okay, so let's start. Let's start uh, from your humble beginning back home uh, where you were born. When were you born? I was born in 1940, uh, on 7th of January, yes. in Katanguri. Katanguri was famous for two things. The commercial entrepreneurship of the Muslims there, they were commercially mobile, and uh, there was went all around the country, mashallah, earned their living. And also the second quality, they were really pious people, uh, in the sense, very conservative Muslims. That's an interesting story about my name. The name Amir Ali was very rare at that time. It, I was named after the great Sayyid Amir Ali, the man who wrote uh, the spirit of Islam. That book was bought by my father when I was young. He read it. And when I grew up, when I was a teenage, he gave that book to me and asked him to read it. Uh, I think about 10 or 12 years ago, I went for a conference in Singapore. There I met a gentleman by the name Amir Ali. Mm -hmm. I casually asked him, what's the background to your name? Believe me, he told the same thing, but not the background, but he said he was named after that Sayyid Amir Ali. So he yeah, was such a famous yeah. man. And uh, when I, I lost my mother when I was uh, two years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very tragic, uh, as far as my father was that, that At that time, it was a love marriage. My father married my mother. I, have, I can't remember uh, yes, how beautiful she was. Lots of people in my young, when I was young always tell me, your mother was the most beautiful creature. And I could see that because later my father wrote an epic in Tamil, Vatum mm. Masar. And uh, that was in 1960 he wrote that. Mm. I still can't read that book all in poetry from cover to cover without shedding tears. Emotional outburst of a man mm. of this boy. And uh, the original manuscript, I can see the teardrops there is fudging some of the letters. So okay. that was, uh, so he lost my, uh, I, he lost his wife. I lost my yes. Name. So tell me a bit, a bit more about your father. So what's his name? His name was Abdul Qadir Lebde. He was a vernacular teacher. I doubt whether I will be in this position without him. He was my guide. And uh, being a teacher, uh, he studied English on his own. He never went to a school to study English. He never had a mm. tutor. He read with difficulty. I could see that uh, after my mother's, he was transferred from Kimurai in the Eastern Province, where you are teaching, Badullan. Uh, today, the Alladan Mahavidyala in Badullan, named after his him because he wrote his poems in the, uh, the, in the pen name, uh, uh, Adan. Adan Mahavidyala actually is a tribute to my father. But they are doing for 18 years, I think, uh, non-stop as 
Where he started learning English, I could see in the toilet, in the, in the wooden team, English words being written there. So my father writes those things and memorizes it. With great difficulty, he learned English and he wanted me to uh, study in English. And to think of me, I think now I am thinking that had my mother lived long, he might have had more than one child, but I, I had a small a brother born after, uh, just before my father, mother's death, he also passed away. So he might, he might have had, or I might have had two or three brothers or sisters. I doubt whether I would have been able to, my father would have been able to afford to dedicate uh, my, me uh, to this level. So, uh, mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I think that things happened in that way. My father never married after that. Or he married once uh, after that, but he was because he couldn't live with that woman. And uh, it, partly because every time he talks to somebody, my mother's memory comes to him. He could not live with that. He was and uh, he lived there. He was almost a bachelor in 1940. And uh, there he uh, put, so he put me at that time in Katangudi Primary School. Uh, division number five, it was called Dornman Tamil School of Kathangadi or something. I studied up five. And the school was just uh, only, uh, only a, a lane that separated my house where I lived and where I went to school. And after the death of my mother, I was brought up by my grandmother, father's mom, and auntie, this left at the care of my father's elder brother, Muhammad Ismail, he was also a headmaster. So he took care of my discipline, studies, everything. And the maternal side was taken care of by my auntie and grandma. That's why I was brought up. And I studied in the school. And one thing that happened in my life is that now and then, from period to period, in each of the different uh, levels of my education, he had some wonderful teachers. Teachers. Hmm. When I was in standard five, there was a teacher by the name of Somasudara, a Tamil teacher from the next village, R.A.M. The things that he taught me in subjects like arithmetic, Tamil grammar, history, Geography, I still can't forget the way he taught the subject. A dedicated teacher. And the Tamil grammar that he taught took me right up to the university, where when Professor Vidyanandan used to lecture Tamil grammar from Nanul, I could open the book and see the picture of the Somasundaram running here and there. And that was the type of teaching that. And did I will not forget that. He mm. was from Arapat and Tamil village. And so I studied up to grade five there. Then went to Kathangud Central College for two years. My father realized that Kathangud is not a place for me to study because it's a commercial village. Not many students were keen studying there. They were all business minded. So he removed me from Kathangud Central College and put me in hostel. About 10 12 miles from Katang. And there again, I was in the hostel. There again, I came across a teacher by the name Ananda Somasutara, a Tamil man from Kalla. He taught me English, uh, mathematics. And uh, he actually took care of me as one of his children. And uh, had a paternal uh, love towards me. And one day he, I was good at mathematics. And I got special prize also in the school. So one day my father came to see me in the school. He met the principal, Mr. Sumasundara. While they were chatting, my father told me later, Mr. Sumasundara asked my father he to educate me as a doctor. Medical doctor. Soon after my mother died, 
my father wrote a small note on my mother. Last two lines, he said, I, I want to see the Tamil. Andava, Kriva, and Pullehale, Unakahom, Savatikahom are Panikri. So he dedicated me to the soil. And uh, so it was society that was in his mind that his child should be someone who will be useful to society, not simply earning money. And so at that time, I could have gone on a different line. My father had learned English and started reading philosophy. My father started reading philosophy, politics, economics. I could see in his Almera books by Karl Marx. All those books he buys and reads. And when he reads, he also explains the substance to me and try to educate me. So I knew about uh, Bertrand Russell and Karl, uh, and Karl Marx and uh, uh, Carol Lasky before I went to university. And even before I entered the Arab College for my uh, university entrance uh, exam uh, classes. So he, that way he guided me. And after passing my GC, not GC, SS exam in 1956, he put me at Zara College come, for my university entrance. Yeah. Here again, Allah has given some good teachers for me. Notably, I will not forget uh, Muhammad Samim, who taught Western history. K. Shivatambi, who taught Tamil and uh, Ceylon, Ceylon, uh, Ceylon history. And Imam Maruf, the walking encyclopedia. Yes. A great scholar. A self made scholar. It's a pity that he died uh, at a young age. But, uh, I have uh, great respect for that man. Uh, he was. He was, in fact, uh, showed me how to do research. So they taught me, and there I was introduced to progressive ideas, you may call it, or Marxist ideas. People like Swetambi and Sami. They were not Marxists, out and out Marxists, but they were familiar with the Marxist views. And it, there I learned, I cultivated the habit of buying books and reading. So in fact, my father used to buy books and he never borrowed books in library. He bought the books and quite a some, uh, substantial amount of money from his salary in buying books and reading. That habit I also inherited. So I read. From that time onwards, reading has become part of it. And from there I entered in University of the only university at the time, University of Ceylon in Tamil Nadu. Let's, let's talk about a bit more on uh, Zaira College. Yeah. When did you enter Zaira College? I entered 96 or 57 that period. Yeah, yeah. Amy yeah. Aziz. Yeah. A lifelong intellectual friend of my father. Uh, I think I had to disrupt here, uh, interrupt here and talk about Aziz. Yes. A.M. Aziz was the government agent in Palmone uh, in the 1940s. Right, right. Where he met my father as a teacher. And what happened was, my father used to publish his poems in a paper called Darul Islam from South India. The mm. pen name, Adan, Al Adan. Mm. So Aziz used to read these poems. So mm. one day my father wanted to go and see this, this environment. He went to his either house or quarters or whatever. And when he entered, uh, Aziz asked him, his, asked my father, he said, Lebe, who is this Adan who writes poems? I'm highly, highly impressed with this poem. He told him his name is myself. And that was the beginning of the eternal friendship. My, he was very impressed by my father because my father uh, was a, a very uh, a disciple of the ideas of Allama Iqbal. Hmm. Allama Iqbal wrote in Persian and Urdu. Yes. But my father doesn't, didn't know those languages. But he had a friend called Muhammad Ismail Ali in Katanguri. And he was also known as Kumbiyar Mahan. So that alim was proficient in three languages, Arabic, Urdu, and Persian. So he used to read and translate those uh, 
uh, question put the point to my father, my father writes them. Mm. So the books, uh, uh, poems are published. Until from 1938 till 1942, my father's poems appeared in Darwin. A. Aziz became a friend, lifelong friend, intellectual. Mm -hmm. So it was 1956 or 57, A.M. Aziz paid a visit to Badullah during a holiday time or something. He met my father. He spent a couple of days with my father. And on leaving Badullah, he has casually asked my father, you had a son, what happened to him? He said he has just finished his studies in Mandarunda Sunda College and he's sitting for his SSC exam. So I just told him if he passed the exam, put him at Zara College. And that's how I went to Zara. I joined Zara okay. College on the instigation of AMA. Yes. And uh, thereafter, uh, AMA Aziz, uh, I didn't have any, I was not in touch. I was not in touch with him at all as uh, head of Zara uh, College, but I was more familiar with my own teachers. But when I passed, my university entrance examination. AM Aziz uh, had a dinner at his house. He invited all those uh, students who passed at, uh, there and gave a dinner. Uh, I couldn't attend that. And after that, uh, <coughs> uh, my father used to talk about him. Uh, he's uh, a scholar, I think uh, he must be in touch with him. And my father, that after that, my father advised me, wherever you, wherever you go to Colombo, make it a point to make meet Mr. He used to meet him. And I, I think that promise, every time I go to Colombo, he would call, go see him in the morning, have a small chat, short chat. Then he takes me in his car and walk me in the way. That's what. Uh, also, when I, when I left uh, Sri Lanka to go to uh, London, my studies, Aziz was there at the harbor. He said, no. He, right. Yeah, and uh, I never forget that. Aziz was there to send you he, off? Or? He came, he came okay. on his own. Give me a send off. Right. And uh, right. I was really <laughs> surprised to see AMA Aziz uh, give me a send off at the jetty uh, for me to go to London. Anyway, that was the relationship with AMA Aziz and my father. They were intellectual friends for a very long time. And uh, a great scholar, and uh, not scholar, and also a great thinker, Amy Aziz. And even the language policy, the language policy crisis, um, my father used to write to him quite regularly about the position of the Muslim education, etc. And I think some of the speeches that uh, Amy Aziz made at the Senate affected my father's, but they were intellectual.